Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Master Mondays, productivity hacks for busy entrepreneurs. So this will be the first Monday of every month at 8.30 a.m. just for a quick 30 minutes of productivity. I'm Ariel Rubin, the Lane County Venture Catalyst. I also have my own marketing firm, and I like to say I'm the innovation strategist at my family's business, Hummingbird Wholesale. Heather, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, for those of you that don't know me, I am Heather Blake. Um, I am the new Oregon Rain Vanita EIC, Entrepreneur in Community. Um, I also own Fernridge Events, which is an event coordination business, and I like to help uh, vendors get themselves uh, situated and presenting really nicely. And um, I also work at the Vanita Fernridge Chamber of Commerce and a list of other things, but we won't get into that. Yay. <laughs> Awesome, we're doing this together, which is super exciting. So today's agenda, we're just gonna start out with quick introduction, um, which we're already partway through. And then Heather will launch a discussion on what do you struggle with most on productivity? And then we'll jump into the main topic just for the last 15 minutes and then we'll close right at nine. So of course, just remain muted. You can put questions in the chat throughout. It'll be, it'll be, pretty casual this morning. And then this is being recorded so you can refer to it after the fact, of course. Um, at Rain, we like to say we're building infrastructure for startups. We're always here to support you and your needs. So please reach out. And we like to say we're catalyzing community across Oregon. So please join in, we'd love to have you. And as always, a huge thank you to our partners, mentors, entrepreneurs, and funders. We love creating thriving entrepreneurial ecosystems with all of you. This is our big team. We're growing in numbers and we stretch across Oregon serving entrepreneurs. So please reach out if you don't already know about us. Okay, so, oh, quickly, what's next? So there's always free resources available. Um, you can, of course, reach out. There's mentorship and ongoing workshops. So this morning, we're talking about being totally overloaded with way too much to do. You may be able to relate to this lovely redhead here, <laughs> freaking out, trying to run away from just the insanity of devices and to-do lists and just a chaos of so many things on our plates these days, uh, plus a myriad of distractions. So just really quickly, we wanted to have a short discussion um, so I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here, and we're just gonna get into a quick discussion, where we'd love to hear just what you all are struggling with. So I'll hand it over to you, Heather. Unmute it. There it goes. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So if you're anything like me, sometimes I will be walking around the house, just trying to feed the animals in the morning, and all of a sudden all these things pop in my head that I need to take care of and it's all over the place. And it, it, yeah, it feels like my head's gonna explode sometimes. And so Ariel and I talked about it one day and I'm like, we need to find some ways to help ourselves and to help everybody else. So we'd love to hear what you guys struggle with and that will help us look for more information to help you out if we, if we don't have anything today for you. <laughs> What are your biggest productivity struggles? <laughs> Anyone? Just the time it takes to produce things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just time in general. Time. Time. There's never mm -hmm. enough time. Or, or energy. Or energy, time and energy. Those are both very important. <laughs> Linda? I think for me, it's just there's so many different directions that I have to take care of. It's the next bright, shiny object that comes in my path and keeping track of, oh, don't forget that one. Oh, don't forget that one. I'm working on this one. Oh, don't forget that one. And so I've created lots of systems not to forget them. My problem is remembering to look at the systems. <laughs> <laughs> I think because I forget pretty, those too. Very relatable. Very <laughs> relatable. We're all like, uh-huh. <laughs> the forgotten list at the bottom of some drawer somewhere. With <laughs> I've tried electronic. I've tried, tried phone. I've tried. I mean, probably the best one I found was called Momentum. 
So every time I open a browser, it's in my face. Did you do this? Did you do that today? I have so, momentum too. It's awesome. Yeah. I like momentum. Yeah, that's great. Oh, good. Anybody else? Um, JT, I don't know who you are, but if you're interested in sharing, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Um, I think mine is more uh, philosophical. I'm at the gym, <laughs> multitasking. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, you know, uh, having the right mindset. Yeah, mm -hmm. mindset. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes that overwhelming feeling can, can, can make you feel really down and then you just, I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> Mine is balancing like work and just everyday tasks. Like how can I be successful in my business when I have no clean clothes to wear or two sinks full of dirty dishes? Um, or, you know what I mean? I think that that like projects like, and, and then I'll revert back to like, well, okay, well, I need to get stuff done at home too, to be successful in, you know, my business. But sometimes, you know, you let the laundry go or the dishes go, or right now I live on two acres and we need to mow so bad. We practically need to uh, hire an elephant to ride on, to get from the back door to the carport. You know what I mean? It's like, we have had no time to mow even. <laughs> So it's like frustrating. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So okay, maybe you want to write, you probably are writing all of these down, but it's I am. like, yeah. okay. So time was a huge one. Um, and then like just self-care and just like getting basic life things done. And then Linda, you are saying just like remembering everything up with all of the different systems and staying on top of all the organization that you've organized <laughs> and then also distractions all of the myriad yeah. of distractions right, shiny objects right shiny <laughs> objects yeah and then jt you're saying mindset so all of these are awesome so thank you so much this gives us a really good direction um, for things to focus on in the future and yeah we'll, we'll hit on all those topics coming up i think that's great yeah Definitely. Well, if there's no further comments or thoughts, I can just launch into today's topic. Anyone else have anything to say or share? Thank you, Kevin. I'm not quite sure what that second one was that you said, self-care. I... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Eating dishes, what? <laughs> Putting my feet up, reading a book. Oh, I'm gonna cry, no, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Exactly. Mindset, okay. JT, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what we would love to do is obviously get from insane overload to a little bit of this, which we're all like, what is this even possible? Laying in a hammock, reading a lovely book sounds almost unreachable sometimes. So today I have a quick technique that I have absolutely loved. Like this one really does a lot for me when I stick to it. It's just incredible. And this is called the Pomodoro technique. Um, so I don't know if any of you have heard about the Pomodoro technique, but it's pretty darn awesome. This guy, Ernesto Ciroli, um, actually invented it. And I don't have a whole lot of history about him other than he has a great face and he looks like a fun guy. So I thought I'd put his picture up here, but um, definitely awesome and worth reading about him. So very, very quickly, a brief overview of the Pomodoro technique, which is designed to um, give you way more time in your day. So essentially all you're doing is identifying your tasks for the day, setting a timer for 25 minutes, you work for the duration of the timer on that one thing. You take a five minute break. And then after every fourth break, you take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go through what all this means. So there's this awesome book um, called the 23.3 hours each week workbook, how to save that much time um, and get twice as much done. 
So you can learn how to painlessly get 40 hours of work done in just 16.7 hours. So that's the whole idea is rather than working for, you know, slogging 40 plus hours, and especially for entrepreneurs, it's like 80 hours, or maybe you're just always working, maybe you're never sleeping. But how do we actually maybe minimize some of those distractions and make sure that for the things that we can actually control, that we're able to sort of control them well and plan them well, and then actually have more time and we're actually saving more time so that we could even potentially spend even just half an hour in that hammock would make all the difference. So, <clears throat> whoops. Okay, so the awesome points in the, the workbook here that I'm gonna share with all of you. So number one is that we wanna work with time, not against it. So many of us live as if time is our enemy, always racing against the clock. And the Pomodoro Technique teaches us how to work with time instead of struggling against it, which I really love. So also eliminating burnout, which is super important for us, especially as entrepreneurs. So taking short scheduled breaks while working eliminates the running on fumes feeling um, you get when you push yourself too hard. So that's pretty awesome. Three, managing distractions. So like Linda was saying, the next bright, shiny object can easily take us away from what we're supposed to be doing. So the Pomodoro technique helps you log your distractions and prioritize them for later. And then um, you could actually potentially create a better work-life balance. Most of us are far too intimidated. Um, is that what it says? Are far too intimately acquainted with the guilt that comes from procrastination. As a Pomodoro master, you create an effective timetable and achieve your high priority tasks so you truly enjoy your time off. So this is what I like because um, I'm definitely a procrastinator at times. And the frustrating part is if I choose to do something that I'm not really supposed to do, I don't really enjoy it. Maybe you've all had that experience of like, I'm just going to watch this thing for and then I'll do that thing later because that thing is hard. But then the thing that I'm doing is really unpleasant because I have that nagging, burning feeling that I need to be doing this other thing. <laughs> so it makes it makes even just like taking a bath or doing the nice things for myself feel bad if I am procrastinating or if I haven't done the things that I need to do. So from all of these things, being able to work with time and eliminate burnout, which is incredible, and then managing all the distractions, you can actually create a better work-life balance. So I'm going to keep going. So what's cool is that this guy has this awesome little table that you can use um, every day, which makes it very simple and manageable. So essentially what you do is you write down your to-do list. He has this cool little spreadsheet that you can use um, and you, you prioritize. You say, okay, these are all the things that I have to do. Well, these are the things that I can, you know, most likely do in this time frame. Um, I'm only gonna do eight Pomodoros today. And like I said, the Pomodoro is a 30 minute segment. So essentially it's 25 minutes on, five minutes off, 25 minutes on, five minutes off, 25 minutes on, five minutes off. And the most important thing is during those five minutes off, you have to get up. If you're working in front of your computer or if you're in a room doing a certain task, you have to leave that room and go somewhere else or do a stretch like literally change your physical posture and do something completely different because the studies show that when we actually change directions and give our mind a quick break, we can recover pretty darn quickly. And what I find is that when I'm taking that five minutes off, if I like go on a quick walk right around my house, or if I do a quick, you know, yoga stretch or even a squat or jumping jack or something, or you know, maybe take a sip of water. This is when you'd use the bathroom or just do any of the life care things. Um, number one is I take better care of myself so I don't get as stiff and horrible working in front of my computer. <laughs> and number two, sometimes when I'm taking that break, it like resets my brain and I remember things that I'm supposed to do or I like innovate or solve problems in a better way than I was when I was just trying to like hammer it out. 
if that makes sense. So the cool thing is he suggests that you only do eight Pomodoros a day. So that's essentially four hours. So taking your entire day into only four hours is pretty darn impressive. It's pretty, pretty darn impressive. And actually, I use this technique even to like, um, just as you were saying, like cleaning the dishes or mowing or anything like that. Sometimes I'll just do like a very modified version of just putting my phone timer on for 10 minutes and just like crunch those dishes like so hardcore. And then when the bell rings, I'm done. And it makes it way more fun because I know that I'm only doing this frustrating thing for 10 minutes. And that's super easy. So it just like, it helps when we set deadlines and we put parameters around what we're doing. Otherwise it feels like it goes on forever. So you use this little tracking sheet if you want to, where you put the date down, you put, okay, I'm gonna do eight Pomodoros today. So I have eight of them ready. I have eight of them available. So I have to draft client action. I have to draft a client action plan. That's gonna take me a while. So I'm gonna allow two Pomodoros for that. Um, I have to do these email campaigns, going to allow one Pomodoro for that, write this article. Okay, that's going to take me even longer. So I'm going to do three Pomodoros for that. And then this blog post I'm going to do tomorrow. But this ebook chapter, okay, sure, I have two. So, so you just sort of think about what you're going to focus on today. What is the most important thing that's in your control that you can focus on today? And then you map out your action plan. So see. Sorry about this. Okay. So other points to consider. Deadlines really work. They keep you from getting too distracted. I don't know if you've seen that hysterical um, TED talk about um, procrastination. It is so good. I'm going to put that link in the chat too. So you can, but he talks about um, for procrastinators, deadlines are like the only thing that wake up the, the like, he has this word for like the, the, the monster inside the deadline monster, because essentially for him, he's like a, a serious <laughs> chronic procrastinator, like writing his, his thesis, you know, his doctorate thesis or whatever in like, you know, the last two days or something and pulled three all-nighters or something. But he talks about, oh, it's called the panic monster, that it's only when you're at the last second that that panic monster wakes up and that can really help us. So not that necessarily we need to feel like this crazy panic monster setting in, but when we set deadlines, our mind can also rest because it feels like it's just this one thing and it's going to end right then. And I don't have to think about it for the rest of my life and have it looming over me. So deadlines really work. They keep you from getting too distracted. Short bursts of work have been found to maximize attention and mental activity. So of course, when we just have the short burst, we're really focused. It's not all over the place. And knowing that there's an end in sight also helps keep procrastination at bay. And then periodic resting enhances the quality of your work. It allows your brain to integrate and get ready to move on to the next task. And that's exactly what I find. When I get up and do that other thing, my, all the pieces like integrate and they fall into place. And then I can even come up with these innovative ideas that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So the beauty of the Pomodoro technique and the beauty of only doing eight Pomodoros each day is that um, here's the math broken down for you. So he, he like actually lays it out where you can think about how much work you're actually doing. So eight Pomodoros times five days per week is 40 per week. So let's just say you're doing 40 Pomodoros per week. So 40 Pomodoros is a thousand work minutes and a thousand work minutes is 16.7 hours. So can you imagine if you were able to get all of what you needed to get done in 16.7 hours? That's crazy. 40 hour work week goes down to 16.7 hours. Like that would be insane. And of course, I know that it can be way more for entrepreneurs. This is just his math as an example, but you can, you can apply that to your life if you were actually able to really focus and prioritize. Another thing that I notice is I can be working for long periods of time and still not get that much done. Have you ever had that problem where you're like, I literally worked for 10 hours today, 15 hours today, and I don't even know what I did. 
Like anyone ever have that problem where you're like, I, I just can't even. Yeah. And then tomorrow's list feels bigger somehow, but it's like, I worked all day. So this really helps me feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. They're bite off little chunks and I'm going to be really focused. So it's go time. Pomodoros, you know what they are now. You know why they're important and you know how to do them. You have the tools to make them work. Now it's time for action. So he says in this book, it's time to review your action plan. So what you do is at the very beginning of your day, you take inventory of your energy. You say, okay, how am I feeling today? How many Pomodoros can I realistically do? And then number two, you formulate your to-do list. So you write down all the things you have to do today. And then you organize that list, selecting the Pomodoros for the day. And there are things that you can obviously do tomorrow, not a big deal, but there's important things that I should do today. And then you dive in to those Pomodoros. Boom, 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 boom. And then you reflect on what you accomplished that day and what needs to get done tomorrow. So I love this because I don't think a lot of people take time to reflect on how the day went and like what we could do better. And I think that can be super helpful as an introspection tool to say, oh, I actually, you know, got distracted on social media for this chunk in the middle of somewhere and that didn't really work. So, or I was more tired than I expected and had, was a little brain dead here. So how can I do that better? Maybe I you know, do some yoga ahead of time or I, it just gives you a chance to actually, instead of be running, 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 always feeling like you're behind to actually think well about your life because you only have this time, you only have each day. And it's super important to feel like we're living, not just surviving. <laughs> so yeah, that reflection can be super, super helpful. Oh, and <clears throat> one more point too is while you're doing the Pomodoro, you put your phone on airplane mode. And he also talks a lot about how if there's people that are trying to get a hold of you, you reach out to them and you make a plan. You basically say, hey, I'm busy for the next three hours, but I'll get back to you after this time. Or maybe you put a little reminder on your email or you do something where you are mentally saying, hey, I'm not available right now, but I will certainly get back to you. So that way you don't have this incessant chatter. And I use the Pomodoro technique a lot for email because what I find is that email is constant for me. Like there are so many emails. I could spend all day on email and it just feels sort of <laughs> demotivating because it's just like, I'm glued to this email and there's a new one every, every single second. And so when I do Pomodoros instead, then I actually have time for the things that I need to do. So yeah, so what I do is I do, you know, maybe like one Pomodoro in the morning for email. And then I have like a few Pomodoros where I do the meaty things that I need to sink into. And then I do another Pomodoro later in the day. And maybe I do like three Pomodoros and sometimes even just a 10 minute Pomodoro can work for email. You know, maybe, maybe around right before lunch, I do a quick 10 minute Pomodoro on email. But if I create boundaries around email, because email can also lead to distractions. And a frustrating thing too is like, sometimes an email will be a huge project, right? Like someone will ask for something and I'm like, oh, that equals a huge project. So then do I do that huge project now or do I keep doing email? It's just like, it can really bounce you around. So again, getting that Pomodoro and being able to schedule them can really, really help. And to be totally honest, I'm going to tell you like <laughs> something I probably wouldn't tell my boss, but there are times when I can crush a day using the Pomodoro technique and literally go outside for like a few hours. And I'm just like, this is incredible. Everyone's happy. I look super productive. I've really done. I don't even look super. I am super productive. And I have some time that I can actually take care of myself. And then I'm so much more refreshed and ready to get back into the day the next day. So, and you can, you can schedule. So every time you do, you know, a few Pomodoros, you're supposed to take a longer break, like half an hour break or even an hour break. And then you do a few more Pomodoros. So you could schedule that, that 30 minute chunk to be a really lovely walk or 
you know, something super magical. Okay, so that's the end of this presentation. Um, I'm also going to share nine best Pomodoro apps to increase your productivity. It's just an article. So there's actual apps that, that have the timing in for you, which are super cool. Um, and I also have the, let's see if I can show it to you. This is the, the book that I was mentioning. So it's awesome. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's not very long. It's a really easy read and um, it's very self-explanatory. Look, this guy's just enjoying the beach, having a blast. So it has these lovely sections. Um, tips and hacks are really great. And, you know, it just, it's fabulous. So I'm going to share this, this with you. And I hope that you all give it a try. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I know we're right at nine, but if you all want to stay and comment and talk for a minute, is this information helpful? Are you going to try the Pomodoro technique? And if you try it, are you going to let me know? Because I'm really excited to hear. <laughs>